good morning to all the participants the fourth international conference on biophysical technology in dentistry so good to see all of you by online today i would like to sharing one of our cases with the title treatment of plunging ranula by marsupialization with local anesthesia in a young girl a case report before we started, I would like to give an honor to my supervisor, Dr. Nur Wahida. Thank you, doctor, for your guidance to me so I can be able to finish this paperwork. And let me introduce. My name is Reski Amelia. I'm the resident of oral and maxillofacial surgery, faculty of dentistry, Hasanuddin University. I want to express my appreciation for all the committed to give me a chance to present our case report. Without further ado, let me begin to present our case report. Ranulas describe the blue translucent swelling in the floor of mouth ranulas result from mucus retention in the sublingual gland ductal system or mucus extravasation as a result of ductal description caused by inflammation or trauma two varieties of cysts are seen simple ranula and plunging ranula An unusual clinical variant, the plunging ranula or cervical ranula is a cyst that occurs beyond the mucous membrane of the oral cavity into the floor of mouth through a hiatus of the hemilohyoid muscle and into the facial plane of the neck. So it can be appears that asymmetry of the extra oral of the patient. The etiology is unknown, but it has been described in association with congenital anomalies, trauma, and disease of the sublingual gland. Usually, the lesion forms to one side of the lingual frenum. However, if the lesion extends deep into the soft tissue, it can cross the midline. A 10-year-old girl who is not known to have any chronic medical illness present with a complaint of a large swelling of the right submandibular and swelling of the floor of mouth since two weeks ago that was interfering with mastication and her speech. Then swelling appeared in the right neck region since uh, one week ago with no associated symptoms of pain and fever no family history of condition like this uh, intraoral examination revealed a bluish dome shape swelling on the bilateral floor of mouth with uh, the size of the length is 3 cm with 2 cm and height 1 cm you can see the picture in the next slide um, the swelling was soft in consistency smooth, compressible reducible and fluctuant uh, for this patient uh, floor of mouth was elevated This is the picture of intraoral this patient. As we can see, the bilateral side of this patient floor of mouth was elevated. So this patient feel very uncomfortable for mastication and her speech. Extra oral examination revealed a non-tender swelling, freely movable, 
avoid swelling in the right neck region with the length of size is 2 cm and width size is 2 cm this is causing a mild facial asymmetry we can see the picture of extra oral this patient in the next slide this is the picture of clinical extra oral this patient we can see from the room view the ovoid swelling on the right side of her neck region this patient the lesion is freely movable and have the well demarcated lesion from the front side this patient we can see a mild asymmetry of her face and from the right side we can see the ovoid lesion on right neck region this patient and from the left side we can see no appearance of abnormalities from the anamnesis and clinical examination we can make a diagnosis is plunging ranula and we choose the treatment is marsupialization under local anesthesia with all the consideration for this case uh, we can achieve a good cooperation from the patient so we can done the marsupialization with local anesthesia the procedure of marsupialization are first we made the disinfection around the lesion and we give an injection of local anesthesia around the lesion the incision on the floor of mouth was made with the length around one centimeter and we made the blunt dissection we use the hemostat to explore the capsule of granula and make the accumulated saliva get strain for this case we using the suction from the dental chair to get drain the saliva and after the saliva gets drained we made the packing with antibiotic with uh, entamicin over intraoral defect was applied to this patient and the patient were discharged with antibiotic and analgesic oral medication This is the picture of intraoperative procedure. Figure number 3, we can see the incision were made with surgical blade number 11 on the floor of mouth this patient. The incision were made not across the midline and we explore the capsule of ranula use the hemostat very carefully to avoid the anatomical injury. The accumulated saliva get strain we can see the viscous saliva this patient in the picture we use the suction on the dental chair to drain the saliva we give a little massage on lesion at neck region this patient to help us to push the accumulated saliva and we put the packing of antibiotic with gentamicin on the floor of mouth this patient on the figure number four this is the picture of extra oral after marsupialization we can see reduces of size the lesion on the right neck region
post operation control on fourth day there were no complaints of pain swelling and fever on the seventh day the packing antibiotic was removed parastasia was absent in this patient and the simple suture were removed on the 26th day post operation we hacking the capsule of ranula and mucosa of mouth hopefully they're available attract to accumulated saliva to still get strain on this patient and on the third day follow up this is the picture of clinical extra oral after 30 days of operation no recurrent reported there are two different concepts in the pathogenesis of ranula one is a thrusis formation due to ductal obstruction with an epithelial lining and the other is a pseudocyst formation due to ductal injury and extravasation of mucus without an epithelial lining some others mention that a logical treatment is excision of the suppling wall gland followed by transoral drainage of the plunging ranula marsupialization cryosurgery carbodioxide laser excision and micro marsupialization can be also recommended primarily to treat oral ranulas non-surgical and minimal invasive therapies have been attempted to avoid surgery related morbidities oral and plunging ranulas if large may affect swallowing speech or mastication and may result in airway obstruction the very rare thoracic ranula may compromise respiratory function and may be life-threatening Marsupialization or unroofing is also reported to be effective surgical procedure with the simple addition of the packing of the entire ranula cavity with gauze after marsupialization. The rate of recurrence is minimized. In this case, the treatment plan focuses on solving the main complaint because the size of the lesion compromises eating and speech of this patient causing interference to the physical and social well-being of the patient the treatment is performed under local anesthesia because the patient's cooperation can be achieved so that treatment can be done immediately with minimal complication Plunging ranula in pediatrics successfully treated by marsupialization in local anesthesia. If cooperation from the patient was achieved, removal of the plunging ranula through an intraoral approach in local anesthesia can be a choice with low morbidity, minimal complication, and absence of recurrence. This is the last slide from my presentation. I would say thank you, doctor, for your attention, for your time. I hope you can take a good advantages from my presentation and have a great day.